What's good, people? It's your boy Rhino. Welcome to MGTV. This is Let's Talk United. This is your latest Manchester United news and just the latest talks about Manchester United, to be honest. Um, I'm going to be talking about my preseason thoughts now the preseason is over. I'm also going to be talking about outgoings this week, well, next week, this week. Fred should be leaving this week. We're going to talk about that. Who's going to take his number? Is it Hoyland? You know, Hoyland was previously number 17 with his last club. Is Hoyland taking Fred's number? We're going to talk about that. And we're going to just talk about my preseason thoughts. As I said earlier, I want to talk about who I think has has had a good preseason and who I hope will bring their good performances from preseason into the start of the Premier League on Monday. A week. A week now the Premier League starts. But yeah, let's get straight into it. We're going to start with Fred. Fred is leaving next week, apparently. People, good news, man. To be honest, out of McTominay and Fred, like I've said, I would always keep prefer to keep Fred because I think Fred turns up more in important games than McTominay does and Fred is a little bit more consistent even though they're both <laughs> inconsistent but let me get this up right now so here we go Manchester United expect Fred Sale to advance next week sources guarantee he will leave the club well it says he will 100% leave the club Donny van der Beek as well. There's news here. Negotiations will also continue with Real Sociedad for Donny van der Beek. Listen, if we can pocket 40 million for both of them, you know, use some of that to buy Amrabat, I'm taking it, people. What what, what do you guys think about Fred, um, about Fred leaving? What are your thoughts? Are you excited Fred's leaving? How much money do you think Fred should go for? Um, but me personally, I'm excited Fred's leaving, man. Um, I like his personality, his character. I like his effort. He tries. Um, in terms of running, he's very good at running probably pretty much for the whole game. Um, he can score a goal out of the blue. But the problem with him is... He's not the best quality that we need and he's not consistent enough to even be a squad player. Certain games, you know, like Man, 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 um, when we played Man City at home, he had De Bruyne locked up. The one moment he let the Bruyne slip, um, what's the name scored? What's his name? Grealish scored. His name came out my head for a sec. So you, and we still won that game. Because generally he had the brain locked up, and which was very good. But other than him man marking players and bringing them on as an impact sub to, you know, add some energy into the midfield, you know, the quality is not there. We need better quality. This is Manchester United. We need to get back to the levels that we were were at before. So, um, I would be happy for him to be a squad player if he was more consistent, but. You know, if he leaves and then we're getting someone like Amrabat in, I think it's a very decent upgrade. So, yeah, I'll take that. Donny van, Donny van der Beek, though, um, yeah. yeah. I think it's his time, man. Eric Ten Hag has previously worked with Donny van der Beek before. He's not trying to keep him. It's not even like um, Ten Hag is thinking to myself, okay, you know what, um, let me try and work with um, Van der Beek. I know him. I know his potential and etc. It's just one of those ones where I think his time's up and Ten Hogs realised that, you know, it's not working. So, yeah, as I read in the post earlier, he's in talks with Real Sociedad. So, hopefully Real Sociedad scoop him up and that will be Van der Beek and Fred out the door. And then I'm hoping that we see um, Maguire go out the door and McTominay. If we have those four exits, or at least three or four, I think that's a good window for Manchester United because a lot of people judge windows just on incomings. 
It's the outgoings as well, people. It's the outgoings as well. Okay, moving on. Um, yeah, I think we'll, let's talk about Highland since we've kind of segued onto Fred leaving. Um, yeah, it looks like Hoyland will take Fred's T-shirt. Um, not his actual T-shirt, people. Listen, behave. We take the number 17. And do, do you know what's so annoying? I wish I said it in my yesterday video because I guessed this. I said I think um, Hoyland might get Fred's number because coincidentally Fred's leaving and Hoyland is number 17, you know. Maybe that number means something to Hoyland as well. But now um, it's been... Um, stated by Fabrizio Romano that Fred um, Hoyland will be taking Fred's um, number 17 number um, number 17 so yeah that's why he was unveiled with no um, number because we're waiting for outgoing so that will be very very interesting to see um, so yeah um, moving on now to my final topic of this video is my thoughts my preseason thoughts and I'm going to keep this very brief um yeah man obviously you can't take too much of preseason serious but then there's a lot of bits you can take um it's great that we beat arsenal love that um it's good that we beat rc lons unfortunately we lost to real madrid and we lost to who else did we lose to i can't remember right now dortmund we lost to dortmund as well unfortunately i definitely think um Manu the injury of Manu is um, what damaged us that game. But um, yeah, I want to talk about the bright sparks of preseason. I think Garnacho has proven he's a starter. Um, I, I saw a tweet from Double A, um, Big Up Double A, talking about the fact that, yeah, he feels like Garnacho should be a starter. And I think before, Garnacho wasn't ready, but this preseason, he showed he's ready. And I think what's impressed me about Garnacho is that he's starting to add other elements of his game. We know he's got pace. We know he's got power. We know he can score a goal, but he's starting to show more of looking around for what's best for the moment. He's actually focused on, you know what? I'm in this situation. Should I run and shoot? Should I pass it to A, B or C? Or what should I do? His decision-making has improved a lot. And I know it's preseason, but the fact Ten Hag has started him, I think, a few times, definitely more than twice from what I remember, shows good signs that, look, this is my starting eleven. Garnacho's part of it. He's ready for full games. And we know Ten Hag is very good at working with um, the, the youngsters and knowing when they're ready and implementing them to the first team. And I think that would have been Kobe Mainu next, but his injury was a blow. So he's another bright spot for me. He showed good signs. So hopefully after injury, he comes back in as well. But yeah, um, Garnacho, big up Garnacho, big up Kobe Mainu and Palestri. Palestri was man of the match Sunday game, you know, and it looked like that was our reserve team. And I was kind of looking at this thinking, oh, Sancho's there. But then Sancho played in the first game and the second game. So he had minutes in the first game. He had minutes in the second game. So I think that's important to notice. Some players only played on the sun in the Sunday game. So now we're starting to see what Ten Hag's team is and who his first team, who he believes in. And I think Sancho's still part of it, but maybe there might be a question mark. Maybe he's he's kind of part of it, but he has to see what's good and maybe he's testing him in different situations. But yeah, I think Sancho did, has done quite well in preseason. He did well last preseason. I think when we first started his first game, he wasn't too well, but after the second game, he was quite quite good. So Sancho centrally is quite good. Going back to Palestri, like I said, he was man of the match. Um, Palestri, what I like about him, he's very direct. He likes to bring the ball to the edge, whether it's the throw on side or like the corner. He'll bring it all the way. He'll whip it in. He will cut in as well. He's very, very, very direct. And I feel like he's not scared to take you on. And that's the same as Garnacho as well. I forgot to mention Garnacho's flair and everything as well. But yeah, Palestri is very direct and very efficient. So he's showing that, look, towards the end of that game on Sunday against um, Atletico, Atletico Bilbao, um, the loss was kind of painful in a sense where United did so well, but it just couldn't finish. 
Palestri got the winning guard at the end. Um, and yeah, man, that even kind of briefly brings me into Maguire as well. Maguire, yes, time, man. I don't even want to get too into it. Um, but he did redeem himself a little bit when he, he set up Palestri. But if you look at Palestri, you look at Maguire, there's just, they're just miles, miles apart, man. Palestri is just, looks like he's ready. Um, um, yeah, man. And I think Palestri is just very, very efficient. And he's an actual winger. He looks like he's got a goal in him. He looks like he's got an assist in him. And he looks like when he's running, something's going to happen. And so does Garnacho as well. garnacho has got a bit more star quality. He gives me, I wouldn't say he's like Ronaldo and all of them guys, Neymar and that, but he looks like once he grows into himself, he wants to be, he wants to kind of be that star boy, be that kind of, um, you know, he, be, he knows himself, he knows his source, you know dye his hair blonde you know you you know what i mean he just looks like he's got that about him so that um kind of star quality about him um so i'm happy with sancho i'm happy with palestri happy with garnacho and i'm happy with kobe mainu there's a few other honorable shout outs um damn it's some of some of the other youngsters that looked promising i think hannibal looked decent oh one of our youngsters that scored in that game. Let me know in the comments. Um, I can't remember his name. But there's a few other youngsters that are looking quite promising. But I don't even really want to shout them out yet. I mean, it's not like... I was going to say, let me not put too much pressure on them. But yeah, I'll just keep the main standouts for now. But honorable shout-outs to some of the other academy players and some of the other young players, etc. Um, who else? Um... Varane has been decent. I think he's still adjusting to Onana playing high. Like, I think Varane doesn't really play in the high line, so I can see that he's adjusting to a bit of it. Um, yeah, Martinez was good. Casemiro has been good. Rashford was good in the last game, missing in the game before. So, yeah, to be honest, my honorable, my, my, my main standouts were Garnacho and Palestri, to be honest, consistently as well. So, Big up them. If I've missed out anybody, let me know in the comments, man. Let's have a discussion and we can talk about it. But I think that's about it for me now, man. Listen, if it's your first time watching, please subscribe. Subscribe to the channel. I do a lot of Manchester United news. I talk about other football clubs as well. I do rival talks. I talk about general, like, football kind of gossip or things that we need to look out for. Like, for example, I did the... I did the football um I did the video on mental health, football and mental health. I'll put that at the end of this video as well. So you can have a look at that. And if you've got any suggestions for any content you want me to do, let me know. I also do other topics and I'll talk about general stuff apart from sports as well. So big up, man. Big up all the viewers locked in. Big up the people supporting the channel. Big up the guys that are um and females, but I call you guys, you know, big up you guys. Um, liking the video and subscribing if you haven't please subscribe put post post notifications on and as always tell a friend to tell a friend it's your boy rhino and i'm out peace hey i swear firms are red pattern this